So I get to introduce our guest speaker. I have a hard time calling her a guest um, because she's been here for a little while. You might actually recognize her face as uh, she comes up. She's been with CLF since 2001. She's a teacher assistant for the foundation classes. She's a spiritual life coach. She sits on the board of Ecclesiastics, and she's our congregational care minister. Is this ringing a bell for anybody? I hope so. In addition to her service here at CLF, she is the best grandma Mimi to three grandchildren that she loves. And believe it or not, this is her first Sunday talk for us. So... It's a wonderful and exciting time to be able to introduce Reverend Cindy Fairmont. I'm going to bring her up. We'll do a quick little blessing for her and then let her get on her way. May I? Yes, you may. All right, people, warm your hands. Reverend Cindy, we are blessed and honored to have you here today. We know that your words are words of love and compassion. And we are so, so grateful for your presence in our life and for your presence here in the world. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I have to get a drink after that. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever spoke at CLF, it was at a Thanksgiving service. And Fred Carroll was our president then um, of our board of trustees. And I remember he handed me the bike and he said, hold it close. Remember, it's like an ice cream cone. You have five minutes. Any longer than five minutes, you're out. <gasps> So they're giving me a little longer than five minutes today. So our theme for this month was inspired by record-breaking heat that we had last month in June. And how we stayed cool during, during it, whether you went to the movie theater or a restaurant or just turned your air conditioning down to 69. And we said the response to our physical heat could be a powerful metaphor for how we handle life when it heats up. So each week this month, we are exploring different ways we can keep our spiritual cool when the heat is on. So, so far this month, we learned how to look beyond the horizon, how to integrate with our shadow selves for the full 360-degree effect, and how to simmer down by recognizing our anger, and what we really need in that moment is unconditional love. And Reverend Michelle just gave a beautiful little affirmation to transmute anger if you're unable to get to unconditional love. She gave a beautiful, beautiful affirmation, and I'm going to repeat it because it's so worth repeating. We can transmute our anger by surrendering to God, by saying, God, I do not have to get rid of this on my own. I've had it for years. But I know you can help me change and transmute it. I know you will give me what I need. Isn't that beautiful? I know that you will give me what I need. So we learned from Reverend Lonnie. I actually learned a lot last week from Reverend Lonnie. I just never knew those things about him. <laughs> and today you're going to hear some stories about me that you might not know. I don't, didn't I have two boyfriends at the same time, though? But so, thank you, Reverend Lonnie, for sharing your own annealing. And we learned that annealing is kind of that refining fire. And I think that we've all had experiences where it just felt like, okay, I surrender God, and you have that refining fire that defines you in a new way. So I thank Reverend Lonnie for sharing his own annealing story. So this week, we are taking along what we learned the previous weeks, and learn how to be a beacon of receptivity for God's great good. We are learning to take it all in from the low tides used here as a metaphor 
for the appearance of low points in our lives, to the high seas, which is the vast open space between the limits of tutorial jurisdiction. Say that three times really fast. (laughs) Or, as I like to say, our own infinite possibility zone. So I'd just like you to take a moment using that metaphor and touch in and see where you're at. Are you at the high seas of your own um, infinite possibility? Or are you at a low tide right now? Or are you somewhere in the middle? And please don't judge yourself, because wherever you're at is a perfect place for you. And if you find yourself on the high end of that metaphor, that's wonderful. I am so happy. And if you find yourself on the low tide side, that's okay. I'm so happy too. Because in the low tide, you can see things that you never saw before. So when I grew up in Southern California. And I always liked the beach and exploring in the caves, and especially at low tide, because that's where you can find the best little creatures. That's when you can find the best seashells and rocks. It is in that low tide. So I know that sometimes in our lives, we find ourselves at that low tide moment. And that's great because we can see things we never saw before. And that helps us move forward and get to that place of the high seas. So wherever you are is perfect for you. Just kind of touch in and know where you're at. Because awareness is the first step to any change that you want to make. So how can we take where we're at and be a beacon of the receptivity of God's great good? First, let's look at the meaning of receptivity, which is to be able to quickly receive knowledge or ideas. And I would like us to use an acronym for the word LET to help us quickly receive ideas today. Ernest Holmes, the founder of Religious Science, writes on page 489 in the Science of Mind textbook, that let, and he capitalizes and hyphens it, L-E-T, is a big word and an important one. The letter L stands for letting go. So you may be asking yourself, what do I want to let go of? Or what do I let go of? And my answer is to let go of any people, place, or thing that is not serving you, does not grow you, or make you stronger. And only you know what's personal for you. So when we talk about letting go, I think of this childhood story. So I was 13, and I tried to water ski. And I was so happy that I got to water ski. So I went to this lake in California, a beautiful lake, and I was so excited, and I was in the water, and I got up really quick, and I was excited, and then I went down really quick. But when you go down, you're supposed to let go of that tow rope. (laughs) I did not let go. I was so terrified, I held on to that tow rope. I think I was dragged around the lake three times. And there was people shouting from the shore, let go, let go. They, you know, I grew up in the 70s, so they even tried that jaw thing, dun-dun, dun-dun, to try to get me to let go. Didn't work. So I just got so frustrated, and so um, I was just, okay, I'm letting go. And as soon as I let go, all the help in the world came to me. So everybody was like, are you okay? And there was tons of people checking on me, and I just felt safe in that spot. And I wondered, how come I didn't let go sooner? So the same is true in our lives. So I know that I have held on to things in my life that don't serve me. Even when I hear that voice that loves me, which we determined is our intuition, say, let go. It seemed like I had to be dragged around the lake a few times, but in my life... I had to take in the mud and the muck before I finally surrendered and say, okay, God, okay, I'm done. You take it from here. You might say I have a little control issue if I hold on so tightly. (laughs) So our first step is to let go. 
And Wayne Dyer said, letting go creates a field of receptivity. It takes practice, and for me, it's continual practice. So practice letting go, and just a little bit at a time. And I have a story at the end of the sermon that will help you do that. And from my reading this morning, the person who can throw himself with complete abandon into the limitless sea of receptivity, having cut loose all apparent moorings, is the one to receive the greatest good. So when we cut loose of all those apparent moorings, that is when God's good is right there. And there are people and places and things that come together to help us. And it's just that easy, although it seems very hard (laughs) to let go. So the second letter, E, is for enjoying life. So right now, some of you may be thinking I'm a little crazy. First she wants me to let go, and now she wants me to enjoy my life. How do I do that at the same time? Ernest Holmes, on page 432 of the textbook, Have no fear of tomorrow. Enjoy today. Refuse to carry the corpse of a mistaken yesterday. Now that's a visual for you, right? And until I did this talk, I, had, I didn't remember ever reading this, but, you know. So, refuse to carry the corpse of a m- mistaken yesterday. So, I'm wondering how many of us carry around our past mistakes. I know for a long time that I did, and I still do on occasion. In fact, I packed my mistakes in a cooler. <laughs> and I took it to parties. And I compared my mistake to other people's mistakes because I thought there was a prize for the biggest biggest mistake. But there wasn't a prize, and I never won. And all I did was promote that past mistakes, past mistakes, by packing them in a cooler and kind of being proud of them. Look at what I survived. I survived this. Darn it, I deserve a prize. But when we let go and embrace just these science of mind's teachings, and that's why I love these teachings so much, because they have taught me how to be aware of my thoughts and my actions and my words, because your words are prayer, and that's your intention. So I try not to pack a cooler. Now I just like... I'm not, I can't get rid of it completely, so I just pack a little onesie <laughs> just in case I need it. So anything that helps us to expand and express greater life, greater happiness, greater power, so long does it not so long as it does not harm anyone, is God's desire for us. Okay, I have to get a drink again, excuse me. My mouth is getting dry because I'm a little nervous. Thank you. So I often in the morning, as part of my spiritual practice, I listen to Abraham Hicks. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Abraham Hicks work, but I love it. And I get inspirational readings for them every day on YouTube. And these teachings are in alignment with Science of Mind teachings because they teach you to be aware of your thoughts and your vibration and your energy. And these teachings promote receptivity and how to be receptive. So, and to do that, you start being happy right where you're at. So, for instance, right now, I am happy that I get to do a Sunday talk. I am happy that I get to speak in a beautiful sanctuary with amazing people. And I'm happy my nerves are settled, kind of. And my butterflies are mostly flying in formation. (laughs) And I'm also happy I haven't got sick to my stomach. (laughs) So I would like you to find somebody to turn to right now and tell them three things you're happy about right in this now moment.
Thank you so much for playing this morning. So just by that little exercise, you have increased your receptivity because you're happy right where you're at. And when you can find things that you're happy for right where you're at, that's where God's great good is, right there. And just being in that receptive mode. So you raise the vibration in this room as well. So thank you. Start by being happy now and enjoying as much life as you want to experience. The T in our acronym stands for trust. I'm talking about trusting spirit, the never tiring, always available, eternal source of all good. And I have a fish story. And it's not the normal fish story that you hear at church. So five years ago, I lived in Wisconsin. And there was this beautiful park right by my house. And the Milwaukee River ran to this park. And so I found a place for my meditation. And it had just a little, little tiny, you know, two and a half, three foot waterfall. And every day, it was me and like two fly fishermen. It was so perfect. And I went there every day and did my meditation. Well, one day I showed up and there were 30 people in my meditation spot. (laughs) And my first thought was, why are these people in my spot? Like I own that part of the universe. (laughs) And I saw why they were there. They were watching the salmon swim upstream. And it was so amazing and so exhilarating because those salmon jumped that little waterfall. And they just went over it and over it. And I I must have stayed there for an hour watching them. And then I went home and I said, salmon have a natural instinct and they just know to do that. They know what time of year to do it. They, They apparently can jump through anything. And they have just the instinct and they just trust that they're going to get upstream. And I thought, how much bigger is my brain? And I know we have instincts. I know we all have eternal instincts. And that instinct is our intuition and listening to the voice that loves us. So I decided after a few moments, if the fish could trust their instincts, then I surely could trust mine. So we, too, have an internal guidance system, which is God, like I said, our intuition, which is God expressing as the voice who loves us. And Ernest said on page 272, I'm just going to, I'm going to say Ernest Holmes, I'm going to say Ernest, and by the end I'm just going to say Ernie, and you guys will know who I'm talking about. (laughs) So, on Science of Mind, page 272, people often say, I don't know what to do, and I don't know how to make a choice. We must realize that there is intelligence within us that does know. Ernie goes on to say on page 481, to trust in the law of good constantly, believe we are surrounded by a power which can and will cast all fear from our minds, free us from bondage, and set us safe and satisfied in a new order of living. And I just love that. I love Leave us safe and satisfied. And that's what we all want. We all want to feel safe. And we all want to be happy and feel satisfied. I often think that we know the answers to the tough questions. And we asked ourselves. But we don't trust spirit or ourselves or both. Because we really are one. I know in my life I had to try trust. trust. <laughs> I had to trust. Oh, I guess it's time for a new drink of water. Excuse me. I wish I was a ventriloquist and could drink and talk at the same time. I'm not there yet. Thank you. So, um, one such time was when I was going to Wisconsin. It's like, how did you get to Wisconsin from Arizona? Well, I'll tell you. I had, once upon a time, in a land far, far away, 
I had a fiance. And my fiance got, got a job offer, and it was either Wisconsin or South Dakota. And we chose Wisconsin. And it's like we forgot we prayed for this job, but we forgot to specify Arizona or a state where it doesn't snow. So they were going to move us two weeks before Christmas. So two weeks before Christmas in Wisconsin, there is a lot of snow, at least in most years. So we, neither one of us had ever lived in the snow. So it was like, this is going to be a big adventure for us. And we really had to take a leap of faith. And we prayed, and we prayed, is this the right decision? Is this the right way to go? And then we just let go. And said, okay, I guess we're going to Wisconsin. And when we made that decision, when we just let go and trusted spirit, everything showed up. There was a moving company that packed for us and moved us, all expenses paid. And they did all the work. Um, I wrote to a science of mind church there. And the minister wrote back and said, yes, we'd love to have you. And it was in my heart's desire to be a minister So in that moment, she said, and I have a ministerial program starting in January. So everything just lined up so perfectly. And it was all because we took that leap of faith. And I am forever grateful for trusting spirit. Because we not only went to Wisconsin for a management position. I went to Wisconsin to expand my consciousness and to be in the ministerial program. So God is like that. There's God's great good. And you just never know the treasures that you're going to find when you trust and let go. Because they are so there. And being happy, like we did a little while ago, is being in the receptive mode and able to feel it and know it. And know it at a deep, deep level. I think I talked two pages beyond my notes. So, how I made it back from Wisconsin to Arizona, that's a whole different story, a whole different topic for another day. Next time they ask me to talk, I'll tell you that story. So, there's a part of a gorgeous treatment on page 263 of the Science of Mind textbook. And I want to read it to you. So, if you can close your eyes if that's comfortable for you, and take it in and just breathe, breathe deep and just take the words in. It goes, I am surrounded by pure spirit and by God, the living spirit. My thought is God's thought and it is the law and to the thing that it is spoken. Everything that I do shall be a success. I am led, guided, and inspired by the living spirit of love and right action. I'm compelled to move in the right direction and to always know what to do, where, and how to do it. Isn't that lovely? And it goes on for a couple pages, so if you ever want to look that up, the prayer is just beautiful. And sometimes we don't know what to pray or how to pray. And there's prayers in the Science of Mind textbook that can move us to a place of receptivity. So I promised you a story how you could tell if you're in the receptive mode. And I heard this story, so it's not original. I'm just going to take it on as my own if that's okay with you guys. So I want you to pretend you're in a car with your best friend and you're driving. And your best friend goes, oh, don't go that way. Why are you going that way? Go this way. And you're like, I don't want to go that way. But your best friend is very insistent. Come, come go this way. And you're still kind of resistant. And you know, you're like a quarter of a mile and you have to make a decision. So you make the decision that your friend is right. I'm going to turn. But then you secretly hope that your friend gets lost. (laughs) 
So you kind of say it to yourself. Well, I'll go her way, but um, yeah, I hope we get lost. So if you're hoping that your friend gets lost, you're not in the receptive mode. <laughs> so when you're in the receptive mode, and you can use this with anything, not just driving, because I, a lot of us have interactions with people every day, and we can use this. So, if you were receptive, and we're saying that you are now, and you go your friend's way, and you are receptive, and you just find things to be happy about along that way. Oh, I never knew that was there. There's a house I've been wanting to look at. There, oh, look at that beautiful tree. That tree is so beautiful. Look at, there's kids playing in this neighborhood. Isn't that great? The kids are out playing. So God's greatest good, when we let go and let go of our, I'm going to say, our need to be right or our need to be in control. If we just let go, God's greatest good is there on the other side. And it is reachable, and we all have it. So let us anchor these words in prayer. But first I want to say... say, Oh, my notes are mixed up. This is good. It's okay. I'm missing a page. All right. It's okay. I can make it up. (laughs) So, we are in the receptive mode on the high seas of receptivity by letting go, by enjoying life, and by trusting God that there is a greater good waiting for us now. That's what was in my notes. So, I would like to end in prayer. So God, that one infinite spirit that is all there is, that is right there on the high seas of receptivity, that is in the low tides, spirit is always there, that never tiring always available we just need to turn to it so right now we turn to that spirit that place in us within us that where there is love and wisdom and clarity and receptivity we just touch in and we unite with that spirit. We are one with the spirit. I am one and everyone in the world is one with the spirit. And we are infused with the same qualities of God. So within us, there is an eternal guidance system. Within us, there is wisdom and clarity and receptivity. So I, Cindy, speak my word for anyone who hears my voice. That we are in the receptive mode. That we leave here today being receptive to God's great good. And as one of the readings said, we just let go of all of our fears, all of our doubts, all of the need for control. And let go and let God. Just let go and know that God's great good is waiting for you now. And from this place, I am so very, very grateful. I'm grateful for these teachings. I am grateful for my receptivity and the receptivity of everybody in this room. I'm grateful for loving hearts that I have in my life which are all of you and I am also grateful for the instant manifestation of these words of truth so I let go and let God I let go and I let it be and together we say and so it is 